You think that's a lot of bags? Yeah. Clothes, clothes, overnight bag, pilot bag, survival bag and camping bag, and filming bag. But the number one reason for this 12 day trip to Scotland is because I have been trying to write something really important for Best Agent. It's like an inauguration speech. And I need totally clear headspace. And despite my best efforts, I've not been able to achieve that at home. I'm also revalidating my seaplane rating while in Scotland with Hamish in G, in G Dram. Hoping to get some good footage of that. My first flight of the three I would do today was to Kitty Hawk Aerodrome in Sussex, an airfield I've always wanted to go to, and this was my first time. I was meeting the flying mum, uh, who's a follower on Instagram, to give her and an instructor a lift from Kitty Hawk to Headcorn. It's been a long time since I've done a trip like this, and it feels fantastic. It really does feel amazing to actually be using my plane to travel. And to do something that would just take so much longer in a car. November, back to eight. So my second flight of the day was a heavy takeoff on a slightly soggy wet runway in the rain with Sarah, the flying mum, uh, her instructor friend, and a lot of fuel and a lot of bags. Uh, but as you can see, we still got off the runway uh, well before halfway. You reckon we can do a right turn? Yeah, I reckon that'd be good. Oh, looks a lot better up here now. It's much better, isn't it? I can't believe you haven't been to Headcorn before. As yeah, that's quite a South quite and southeast, one. yeah. There are so many airfields I haven't been to before. Uh, this is why I had this idea, Sarah, about the, the air rally. Yeah, I was telling Ben about it. That sounds, sounds like good fun. Yeah, just to no pressure, anyone can take part. Just yeah. see how many airfields you can land at in the summer. Uh, there are, there are plenty know. to choose from. Yeah, and then just... There's a sort of flight planning element to it as well, which is the most airfields with the least distance flown. <laughs> yes. Is that the threshold where those main markers are? Yes, there, the touchdown. Sort of area. Helicopter Yankee Delta, um, clear off the aircraft landing, so we're going to cross the active. Nice. Yeah, yeah, lovely space. And you could dive off whenever you like yeah. between the markers. There you are, sir. There you are, madam. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, that was very, very kind of you. Well, that was no less than one, two, three, four, five, six people I've had come up to in the last two airfields and say hello, because they've seen my YouTube channel. Which is amazing. That's Sam, who just came and said hello to me in that 172. My third and final flight of the day was a short hop from Headcorn back to Piltdown to spend the night at my parents. Number 200 Sierra, taxi to Alpha for power checks, for departure, Robbie 28. Roger, QNH 1017. Watch out for the telephone lines if I have to go around.
a bouncy one. The thing about YouTubing that takes more time than anything else is sorting out the footage. And I've just finished sorting the footage from three flights today. Downloaded, sorted, ready to give to the editor. So now I can go over the road to my sister's for a jubilee party. That was the first great day of the trip. A great first day of the trip even. It was my ground crew for the day. She pushed the plane. Yeah. Thank you for your ground handling services. Um, this is a 950 meter strip from that far end by the telegraph wire. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, to that and where the trees are, but those are 100 foot trees down there. Sierra turning final runway 08 to land full stop. November 200, land at your discretion, 150 at 5 knots. Turning runway 08 to 00. Made it to Elstree. Street, that was a bumpy and really bumpy and therefore quite a stressful flight. Really close, only like a couple hundred feet between controlled airspace. Um, but everything went well in the end. Beautiful flight, amazing going over the Docklands. Um, so I'm now waiting for my passenger to come for taking for a ride. I'm taking my friend Murray. Good morning, good afternoon. Best rather. agent, probably the original <laughs> best agent. On a sightseeing flight around London City Airport. And if we're lucky, we're gonna get clearance back to come up through past the Thames Barrier, the Olympic Stadium, Ali Pali back to Austria. Um, just picked on the phone and they said if they can they will fit us in. So we're currently routing eastbound from Elstree towards Thurrock uh, and requesting a return via um, the River Thames, uh, Thames Barrier, Olympic Stadium and Halley Pally. Back to L Street, 200. November 00, yeah, Roger. I'm afraid that's highly unlikely to happen. London City are on easterlies today, and if you follow the river, clearly you'll be into the teeth of the departures, so I'm afraid that's not going to happen. Roger that, November 200, yeah, thank you anyway. Uh, yes, all gold, sir. Um, what the hell is that? I'm about, uh, 10 miles what the hell is that? I'm what? Nothing. Oh, it's a balloon. Huge respect for your talents. So complicated. It's a really special thing to be able to do. Sorry? Yes. It's a special yes. thing to be able to do. Give me a bearing. So what's that one? We're heading southeast at the moment. And so that's the QE2 bridge there. Yes, yeah. That's the Thames Estuary. Okay, now I got you. Okay, so south end in that direction, yeah, okay. Cool. South end's off to our left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I've got my bearings, yeah, okay. Sean, Charlie, Alpha Papa, overhead bottom bar. Alpha Papa, Roger, runway 08 left hand, the QFP is 1008. QFP left hand, uh, sorry, uh, 08 left hand, and QFP is 1008. Delta India holding short echo, request taxi, park. Excellent Charlie, thank you very much. Experience of a lifetime, really enjoyed it. Um, but that was a great day too. I have just discovered that uh, one of the reasons for going up to Scotland is to do my seaplane revalidation. And I've had a text today saying that the seaplane has a problem with the hydraulics and it's not going to be ready in time for my scheduled uh, work, but might be ready before I finish my trip in Scotland. So. 
We'll find out. Welcome to day three of my 12 day trip around the UK to Scotland and back. Uh, day three, I woke up in London. I had to get to Elstree. My first flight was planned to go to Nayland, the, air, the very short ski jump airstrip in Essex, which is the home of Tim Palmer, the Jodel Flyer YouTube channel owner, um, to finally meet him and give him his book, which I, which he won at Christmas. But nothing that day went as planned. It's turned into a lovely day, but a day full of uncertainty, lots of flying, uh, and finally with arriving somewhere, and I had no idea where I was going to find if I could find somewhere to sleep. I lived in Battersea since 2005. So that's 17 years. There's the power station right there. And there's never been a tube station in Battersea until now. That's my first time using Battersea power station. Tube station. I was just, just realized that, is it Battersea power station or Battersea power station? Station, cool. Just got to Elstree, to the plane. And uh, planning to fly to Nayland for the first time to see Tim. And it's showing 25 knots crosswind. So I'm going to give him a call and see if that's actually something that they ever do. But that's that's a 2,000 feet, so I, I'm just going to give him a call and find out what the wind is at the surface. Oh, I just spoke to Tim and he said, yes, it's very sporting. It's, it's, it, 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 the worst part is it's very gusty. Uh, it's, it's, it's gusting it's going from zero up to 20 knots back to zero and with, with trees and rotors and gusts and a steep uphill slope and a short runway. I'm calling that a no-go for today. It's, it's not worth the risk. Right, welcome on board everybody for short flight from Earls Colm to Elstree on a windy day. It's a bumpy one, but I'm letting the autopilot take the strain. Very flat up here, but very beautiful, very green. I don't know why we haven't got enough houses in this country, because there's more than enough space for them. I've had a very special welcome from Earls Colne Airfield, uh, who um, have welcomed me here. Uh, and I really appreciate their support. And I love coming here. I come here anyway because I've got family. Um, but now I'm going to be wanting to come here even more. Thank you very much, Earls Colne. And November 20, Sierra, Sierra Roger, uh, wind 060 degrees, 16 knots. What is that? 200. I have never, in my 10 or 11 years of flying, 12 years for however long it is, 2900, ever flown up the east coast of England. So this is completely unflown territory for me. I don't know where I'm staying tonight, but um, the person I'm meeting at Bagby um, has very kindly arranged to leave a car for me, a Land Rover with keys in it. Never flown up here, don't you? We've driven up the East Coast. This might be one of the very first times I've ever been to this part of England, whether by road or sea. Very cool. <laughs> that person's radio is an areas. Oh, she can hear him. I don't know how she can hear that. 
Send number two zero Sierra, final runway zero six to land, full stop. Just landed at Bagby Airfield, but starting to feel like an adventure because I still don't know where I'm staying tonight and it's almost five o'clock. Uh, and I don't know where I'm going next or when. Is this Bagby International? Have I it found is. it? Yeah, you yeah. have. Um, is that Land Rover, Matthew Fox's? No, it's uh, mine. It's the Airfield's. Oh, it's the Airfield. Oh, he, said, he told me I'd be able to use it this evening. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's very good of it. Yeah. Um. I've never told anyone, but I used to own one of these. I had one. I got one brand new in the 90s when I was running my car washing business. I feel so at home in this car. This is a 22 year old Land Rover 90. And it's like, oh, it's like an old extension of, extension of my arms and legs. Completely. What is it that makes some machines so lovely? Here I am. I'm hoping I get myself a room for the night here. I've got no rooms, they're fully booked. But I'm going to have a pint here and then go to the Premier Inn. So I was enjoying my pint of Guinness here in Spoons in Thursk. And I texted Emery to say, there's nowhere this day, there are no rooms, I'm going to be camping at the airfield. And this is when you know you've got an amazing partner. Because the response was a call from her saying, I found a hotel, a nice one, and it's only a few miles away. And she's booked it for me. Literally just made my day. Emery, you are a rock star. 10 miles is a long way in a Land Rover. It'll do. Thanks a lot. You know when you're thinking about what to say at an establishment you've just stayed in, and you just can't think of anything nice to say about it. <laughs> There he is. I was at Bagby Airfield having spent the night there to meet with Matthew Fox, um, who runs a really impressive uh, maintenance and aircraft sales organisation from there. Um, and I had no idea where I was going to go or when, and it was a very last minute decision to go to Perth, because I tried Glen Forcer, but they were fully booked, had no accommodation. Um, I tried somewhere else, it was the same problem, can't remember where I tried. Um, and it was a bit late in the day, so I had to do out of hours, indemnity and PPR for Perth. And I'm booked into the Sky Lodge at Perth, which I should be landing at in a little under an hour from now. Wow, there's a road down there across the moor. road. There's a reservoir down there. Oh, this is epically beautiful. Considering that we're not in Alaska, we're not in Scotland yet, we're in England. The borders. So I've been cleared right through the Edinburgh Airport overhead, which would be cool. Number 200 across the runway centre line round north of runway 06. Number 200, thank you and continue towards Kelty. Continue towards Kelty, November 200, thank you. North Road Bridge, look, this is so cool. Awesome. So cool. I know I say this every time I'm here, but Scotland is so beautiful, it really is. I mean, it helps that it's a sunny day. significant section of that flight between Newcastle and Edinburgh going over the, the moors up there. I was driving myself crazy in my head imagining all kinds of vibrations and things that they were going to, they meant imminent disaster. Uh, 
and it's incredible how you, you can really work yourself up into a state. I was in the right old state, actually. I didn't want to say anything out loud. I didn't want to jinx it. Oh, God. Does anyone else ever get that? Thank you for joining me on that flight. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, I now really enjoyed it in hindsight. <laughs> it was stunningly beautiful. Little hotel room. It's a, this is the Sky Lodge at Perth Airport, but it's super cheap, 28 quid. Um, and I just needed to find somewhere to stay in Scotland tonight, and the first couple of places I tried were full. So I'm going to be here for one, maybe two nights. Overslept. Missed breakfast. But good night's sleep at least. And it's a short half an hour flight over the mountains to Oban on the west coast. Can't wait. Really simple flight from Perth to Oban with a very nice tailwind. Oh, Scotland, you do not disappoint. That's Perth, I guess. They're beautiful. Right, my mission today is to find myself somewhere near Oban that I could potentially stay for a few days. Got any information? Got Getting bumpier over the hills. Some of those peaks look quite high on my track. I'd have to still have a bit of snow on them. Urban information, November 1320 Sierra on the pumps requesting engine start and taxi instructions for parking. going on here. Might have just been a bit of calm. I've never had that hot start problem before, but that was the first because my hot starts normally like that. That was the first time I've ever tried to start the engine when it's hot without following the hot start procedure. It's tricky, hot it's to start with it, it's hard. It's fast to use it <laughs> when it's like this, it's not bad. Eh? I was talking to, I just, I just came from Perth and the guy sitting at reception, their reception office looks the opposite way so all they see is a car park and a wall on the other side they've got a beautiful airfield and everything else. Police have never seen Perth. No. It's a lovely airfield, uh, really lovely, beautiful busy, setting. It's a busy place as well isn't it? Yeah, very busy. Uh, the train there, there's about half a dozen planes in the circuit this morning when I left. But my mission now is I've got to find myself somewhere to stay. Oof. That's going to be a problem. Well, Open is very, very busy. Yeah. 
It amazes me. This time yesterday afternoon, I was at Bagby Airfield. I had no idea where I was going, where I was staying, and how long for. And at the last minute, I decided to go to Perth. Flew to Perth, very good experience, lovely airfield, cheap hotel for the night. And this, today I came to Logan, uh, to open. And now here I am, check this out. It's just incredible, and I'm gonna be staying in this hotel, basing myself in this hotel for a few days. Um, and I've met a pilot at the airport who, uh, he flies a Britain Norman Islander around the Scottish islands. And he's given me some fantastic tips of islands to go and land on. Check out the sea view. Just, <laughs> can you see it? Just there. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to find fish tacos in uh, Oban, but just going for a little ride on the one wheel. And uh, get myself some fish tacos. I'm gonna sit up there, look at the bay, and oh, my supper. Yeah, it's literally just, I'm uh, not filming as I just wanna catch the moment of, yeah. So you'd like to come flying with me? I would absolutely love to come flying with you. Are you sure? I'm, yes! <laughs> I'm reasonably you sure. You don't know what you're letting yourselves in for. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if happen. we trust Great. you. There's Jean and Andrew, right? Jean and Andrew. Yes. <laughs> do you have a preference which way we fly up Loch Or? Do you want to go from north to south or from south to north? Uh, no preference. Okay. So in which case we'll take off to the south, keep on going south down the coast. Mm -hmm. we'll turn left. Okay. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? It's lovely. So beautiful. I'm just amazed at how quick that got off the ground there. Oh, that was longer than usual because we're heavy. Uh-huh. Everything looks just that much different from up here. It's really cool. So I was in Oban last night, went out for some food. Go for me, Mike. That's Almost cheaper than electric skateboard. Yeah. And uh, found an amazing fish taco place, which I didn't, I've never had tacos anywhere except America. And uh, got talking because you picking my brains about skateboard. Yeah. I was wondering how the hell you could possibly balance some yeah. of this. I didn't even realise it was electric for a start. Yo, and this is Andrew and this is Jean. Yeah. Um, and we spent a good hour and a half putting the world to rights last night. So how close to the side of the lock is your mother's house? Uh, we're at the edge of the lock. Oh, you're right well, on it. Well, the, the farmland is to the edge and the house is close to the edge. Okay. The two pylons at either side of the water, that's our farm. Uh, where it goes narrowest before any islands. Yeah, see it there, see one of the pylons. Very hard to tell. I think that's it, yeah. Because right, you can see the uh, the wood store there. And, uh, there's the, the shed as well. Uh-huh. Where? Down there. Right down there. Oh, there's my farm! There it is! Oh my gosh. That's cool. What a beautiful spot. And you grew up there. Yeah, I've lived there my whole life. My father's had the farm his whole life as well, and his father. Ah, oh, you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number 1320 ready for taxi to Bravo for power checks and departure. November 1320 Sierra, Cessna 182, just departed Oban on a flight to Benbecula, 1POB, VFR, uh, requesting basic service and activation of my flight plan. Departure time uh, 23, November 20 Sierra. So, I think my destination is. 
over there. You can't really see it. Over there. But I'm keeping over here so I'm close to this land. So I can glide to land if needed. But look at it. It's just sensational up here. E326, Victor, redirect, turn on final 05. Clouds and mountains. Not things that you want to mix together when you're flying. Irrationally nervous about that flight just because it was over water. I was really, I mean, everything was fine. I just did that whole flight with the passenger door not closed. There really is always something, isn't there? Here I am. Then back in the airport. I don't know why, I just thought it was going to be a small airport. Question is, can I carry all of that whilst riding the one wheel? It's a shame the cameras weren't running because I just, whilst carrying all of that luggage, came a cropper on the one wheel. That electric gate has got like a bit of a gutter across it. I looked and I thought, I should be okay going that. I thought maybe I shouldn't just try to see what happens. And I came a cropper. I've got something hurting in my leg and I'm currently on hold. I've been hold for 20 minutes to the 111 service to see whether or not I need to go into hospital and have this x-rayed because as I came down, I, I stumbled onto my leg very, very hard and it's very painful. I've taken painkillers. Apparently the uh, my tumble was caught on CCTV in the airport security and uh, there were a few people there and they had a right giggle. It looked very funny. I didn't think to begin with I hurt myself. Those blade tips are going a hell of a speed. It's going to fly home today. If it's a bit windy, it's going to get windier tomorrow. If you're wondering why, <clears throat> why I'm not walking, it's because I hurt my leg falling off my skateboard. <laughs> so now I'm using my skateboard so I haven't got to walk so much. That is the Dark Island Hotel on the island of Benbecula in the Outer Hebrides which was never part of my plan to even come here and I've been there for three days and there have been 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour winds so I haven't been able to leave the island and I really wanted to come up I didn't even bring waterproofs, so I was so badly prepared but I am just about to have my third night it will actually be my sixth night on the island third night in this hotel, I was in Airbnb before I've been using the time really well to think and work and help figure out how to get best agents to the next stage. That was my room there, three nights, and head to the airport and hope that the weather's going to continue to be like this because there's been some nasty showers going through. Just got to the plane, got the bags in, and just waiting for this shower. Quite a heavy shower to pass through. Made a major mistake or major oversight when tying the plane down from the storm. I did see the weather coming and I thought, put the cover on, put the tie downs on. Uh, and I put the control lock, the gust lock in as well. Um, but I completely forgot to put the park brake on and chock the plane, which made me worry about it. But when I rang the tower in the height of the storm, they said the plane was still here and hadn't moved much, although it has moved slightly. Um, and my route is get across the water as short as possible, be within gliding distance of land. 
and then cross the Western Isles, close to Oban, staying over the water, give me, give me um, low, if I need to get low below clouds, I can do so over the water, and then into Prestwick, and it's about one hour, five minute flight. I'm not going. Clouds are too dark ahead. It's really dark. And I think I probably could weave my way through there. But I don't want to get halfway through, I don't have to turn back and then maybe have clouds behind me. So although the visibility is not looking great. I'd rather stay over the sea, follow the coast, go the long way round. Well, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think I can now see clearly all the way to Prestwick. Well, that was quite challenging so far. And the station called Prestwick Tower to cross, just say again the call sign. Fire 7 cross, runway C0, quick to fire station. Mission number one complete. I believe that might be Stuart, my instructor. Something I haven't had to do in a seaplane before. Put water ballast in the aft compartment of the floats for weight and balance reasons. If I can, I'm really keen to get home tonight. I've now done all of the checks on G-DRAM, comped out the floats, done the weight and balance. Uh, I think we may need to get some fuel in. Um, and I don't want to rush what I'm doing in that, but once that's done, if there's time to get home tonight, two hours to get back to Dunk as well. Uh, it's half past eight and I've just got into a hotel near Prestwick Airport. Um, <coughs> combination of things, weather, um, but I won't bore you with it, but I'm now in a hotel, which is a very cheap hotel, £52, including dinner and breakfast. And because I was late for the dinner, they even decided to make me dinner and leave it in my room for me, which is not bad. And then tomorrow, seaplane rating revalidated, get home to Devon. Mission number two accomplished. Seaplane license revalidated for two years. Mission number three, get home from Prestwick to Dunk as well, but look at the weather. It's just clag. <laughs> it's a long story. I'm a pilot. I got stuck on the island of Benbecula by that storm for six days. I got in from there yesterday to Presswick and I was supposed to be flying myself back to Devon tonight, but the weather closed in. Yes. Compared to my hotel last night, which was a proper shithole. This is nice. You're meant to request Zulu 2 if you want to leave via that one, and that's fine. It's only us that come in and out of here. Okay. So you can request Zulu 2, and the one today, you might actually want to use the short runway. Yeah. Um, maybe 2-1. Got max power, T's and P's good. Air speed increasing. Yeah, I didn't film yesterday's seaplane revalidation flight because it was quite challenging. It was only the second time I've ever flown an amphibious seaplane, which has an added dimension of risk, which is doing uh, water landing with the landing gear down, which automatically will cause you to flip upside down and sink in the water. Um, I just didn't want any other distractions. And it was also important to pass the skills test or the proficiency check that I did in the magic of, of what, what I'm doing right now. Actually, just saying this out loud is helping that happen. Now I want to find this experimental seaplane that's on Lake Windermere. The southern end. I'll just show you what it says. No tab. There you go. Testing the seaplane aircraft within three mile radius. Robin's Point, Lake Windermere.
Max height, 150 feet AGL. I wonder if it's some kind of Ikrana plan. One of those aeroplanes that just flies in ground effect over water. 1320 Sierra Cliffs, cross controlled airspace, uh, routes uh, from the Kirby VRP, and uh, initially no further south than the M62 motorway, and that above altitude 2,400 feet to keep you below Manchester airspace. Easy jet that just landed, taxiing on the stand. Just coasting out from Cardiff, across the Bristol Channel. A beautiful day. I don't suppose they get Amazon deliveries down there. That's Flat Home Lighthouse. And I'm home, just like that. 20 minutes ago, I was still over Wales. But after a long flight like that, I really get to sort of let it sink in and enjoy it after the flight for a while. Like, I just flew from Scotland to England. That's a huge flight home, isn't it? Someone once described those as the Porsche 911 of helicopters.